today's guest, actress Christina Toth, is best known for her role as Annalisa in the groundbreaking prison dramedy Orange is the New Black. The show, which follows the lives of inmates in a women's penitentiary, returns for its seventh and final season today. Take a look. What do we do when we reach the place where we don't know what to do? We're gonna get each other through this. So it will be like old times. Giving up is not the answer. It is good to see you. We have to find our own answers. You shouldn't be afraid. It's the first step in moving on. I read in a pamphlet. Maybe this is the beginning of a road back. But there's got to be a way back. All right, all right. All right. This is a special chicken. This is a magical chicken. Eh. No spoilers. Everyone, please give a warm Bill Brunch welcome to Christina Toth. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm good. I'm really excited to be here. That's yeah. great. And so the uh, we're excited to have you. The new season dropped today. Yeah. It What's did. going through your head? <laughs> um, I think I'm still on Clyde Cloud Nine from yesterday's premiere. Mm -hmm. I think I'm still living that. Um, you know, it was my first big red carpet premiere, getting to speak with interviewers. So it felt so nice to be welcomed and, uh, you know, navigating that red carpet felt like a breeze. <laughs> um, and just the event in itself and, you know, like it's the finale and just to be a part of it and being included in that journey, I mean, I'm lucky as hell. Yeah, cool. and what was the audience reaction like last night? Yeah, there was audience members with us, um, and also like at, at in the after party, we got a chance to speak with some of them, and it, it's it's a family. Orange yeah. is a family mm -hmm. from um, cast, crew, producers, but also the audience members, and it's nice when we get to share that experience and hear from them and how Orange impacted them and. Um, to see how representative it is also because there were people that had experience with being incarcerated that were so, um, you know, wonderful with sharing that with us. Yeah, so. that's great. Yeah. And tell us um, what fans can expect from the final season, the final episode. Will right. things wrap up in a way that people are happy with? <laughs> um, well, I mean, you know, it's it's Orange and it's Gen G and... Um, she, she goes her way, and Orange is very loyal to the fact that they're unapologetic mm -hmm. and what you see, what you get, and they love starting the conversation, bringing light to issues, political, you know, topics, so you can definitely be ready for the current events. Right. We'll have definite light on them, and um, there's, there's no tying a pretty bow. There's definitely, like, let's open the window, let's throw ourselves out there, <laughs> and... Just be a human, like open your heart, let it affect you, and then talk about it. Yeah. That was a great spoiler-free answer. <laughs> we'd be very, very proud of you. She did say, she said, there's no tying a bow, but there is opening a window and jumping out. Yeah, I like that. That makes me excited <laughs> to watch. Uh, speaking of your character, was Daddy's second in command. Yeah. Uh, are we gonna see your character evolve or change in any interesting ways? So last season, in season six, she was, you know, Daddy's girl, and then, started migrating a bit and becoming Barbara's mm -hmm. soldier, kind of, especially with at the end with all the shanking mm -hmm. and going to battle. Um, so I feel like Annalisa sometimes will operate in the shadow. Mm -hmm. Like she is very good at analyzing and studying everybody, understanding what her interaction with them will be like. She's very um, mischievous yeah. um, and foxy in that way where mm -hmm. she'll like, pounce at the good time. Um, so I feel like there's a lot of that in season seven. Mm. So she does form new alliances, which um, as an actress, I was just thrilled beyond compare to get to work with the people that I get to work with. Um, I was waiting for you to say which nope. characters. I was like, God, you're so good at not spoiling <laughs> it. <laughs> um, so 
Yeah, there's there's some new things. Yeah. You mentioned the amazing cast and you getting to work with some new faces and the cast is so dynamic. What was it like for you coming into such an established show mm. um, with a cast that is, is so amazing? I mean, the first day that I was on set, that was definitely the imposter syndrome yeah. that mm. kicked in. Um, you know, I joined the family after six years of already been in place. Mm -hmm. um, but from the minute I got on set, everybody, like, they were a family, and mm -hmm. they make sure that you know that you're part of the family. Good. So that feeling of being welcomed and trusted and wanted there is such a warm feeling, and it makes you want to do the best work possible. Mm, definitely. And you mentioned um, before when you were filming season six, you would often get the scripts as the shooting mm -hmm. schedule would, um, was happening. Yeah. Was it difficult for you to find your character, to create your character, as you were kind of had to move so quickly through the production process? Well, so I feel it is true. Like, you always have your imagination going places of being like, oh, what's my backstory? Mm -hmm. Why am I in prison? And you sort of create key points that make sense to you and that also go along with the structural sense of the script and what they give you, like say I'm a drug addict and I'm right. part of like the drug smuggling business and so you kind of associate things along, that makes sense. Um, but yeah, as the season, as the episodes would go, you'd have like just a tiny bit more information mm -hmm. um, and I love that. It right. keeps you on your toes and it keeps your imagination always boiling and right. always searching for new information. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned earlier that this season, which is so exciting because Orange is New Black, is caught up to current events mm -hmm. and will be touching on ICE detention centers and the Me Too movement, which are very serious topics. How do you, as, as part of this dynamic cast, balance tackling these issues but also keeping you know, the fun <coughs> atmosphere on set alive, keeping that mm -hmm. family aspect alive? Well, I, I op operate that way. Like, you know, what happens in the work area, you know, t won't necessarily affect my, my private life. Mm -hmm. Like, someone was asking, did you have a moment where you said goodbye to Annalisa at the end? And, um, no, <laughs> <laughs> I did not. Um, that, that's just my process. Um, and so it, I kind of went along that road as well. Right. Where you have... I don't know if this makes sense, but you have in a certain way, you need to distance yourself from the topic to be able to talk about it clearly mm -hmm. in an understanding, because if you're too involved emotionally, then you don't let it serve the purpose it needs to serve. Mm -hmm. It feels too subjective rather than objective and letting everybody else that watches make their own opinion about it. And you've really said that acting has um, uh, reinforced the significance of the human experience for you. So could you speak more on that? Yeah, I was performing in Brussels. Um, that's about three years ago. And um, I'm originally from Montreal, mm -hmm. so I'm French-Canadian. And there was a partnership between one of our great houses back home, Theatre House, that was doing a collaboration with a great theatre house in Brussels. Um, and it does happen a lot. So I flew to Brussels to go and perform, and the day after I flew in was um, the day that they were attacked by terrorists. Mm. So the, um, the airport was shut down. Any means of transportation was shut down, so we needed to stay. And of course, when you're obligated to stay in one place, the first thing you want to do is get out. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, I was in Brussels to do theater, and this human thing happened where you sort of start questioning, like, what am I really doing here, and what's my purpose? And the notion of providing theater and, like, giving an outlet to people that needed to get their minds off of what was happening is where I understood, oh, this is why we do art. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And how is it for you, because um, you're still actively doing theater, how is it uh, for you navigating going between TV and theater, like the difference? I love the balance. I feel <coughs> like it's very healthy because like the understanding of the medium is, de is very different. Like how you use, like you always use your body obviously because it's your, it's your um, tool. But 
you operate differently. Like there's a certain thing that the camera needs that you have to give it, mm -hmm. and then the theater needs something different, and also just the way that you interact with people. Theater is there. Mm -hmm. You have like a conversation, like from the light of the stage goes into the dark, comes back, that light comes back to you, and there's like a circle motion. Um, in theater, people show up. Mm -hmm. In TV, people do show up, but in a different way. Mm -hmm. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So I like that exchange and difference, and it's, it's, are, they're two different challenges for me. Mm -hmm. And when did you discover acting was for you? Um, I was, I mean, I was always one of those artistic kids, and thankfully to my mother, who let me. Like, I feel like she's a definite part of this, to, mm -hmm you know, let me run free and explore and, um, you know, figure out what my art form was. Um, but starting age 14, I was doing like those high school plays. Mm. <laughs> and then I met my mentor at 18. She was one of our great French Canadian actresses and mm. she taught me everything. She's definitely my backbone and um, she passed when I was in Brussels. So. Um, but, you know, she's yeah. still around with me. That's amazing. I yeah. love that. And you're just so naturally captivating. I'm so excited to see your career move on and do more. What else can we look forward to? Um, I am going back to theater mm. for the mm. summer and the fall. It's all here in New York City. Mm. Um, I'm actually very thrilled that um, being French-Canadian, when I was in Brussels, <laughs> I met another playwright from back home, and his play was just... It really inspired me. It's called See You. And we're giving him his New York premiere in September. I'm the resident artist of a theater company here. And so oh, I nice. just said to our artistic director, I was like, read this. Tell me what you think. It might be good. I think you might like it, because I really like it. That's awesome. <laughs> so we're doing it. That's and wonderful. Mm -hmm. We can't wait to see yeah. everything you do. Thank Christina, you. thanks so much for joining us. Oh, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. The seventh and final season of Orange is the New Black is available to stream on Netflix today.